Now, I'm really excited to introduce you to our next speaker. Uh, Christina Yurchuk is a mental health first aid instructor as well as a learning facilitator. Christina currently works as the learning facilitator in the coaching and counseling offices at the Missioner Institute of Education. It's part of the University Health Network in Toronto. Uh, she has over 20 years of experience developing and delivering workshops in a variety of professional, uh, community, and academic settings on various topics, including assertive skills, professional communication skills, academic skills, stress management, and career development. So welcome, Christina. We're so happy to have you join us today. Um, I'm going to turn the floor over to you, and then I'll be back towards the end of the session when we go to answer um, some audience questions. So take it away. Thank you, Meg. I'm going to share my screen now. Don't think I'm... There we go. Can everybody see that? Great. Looks good from here. All right. Thank you so much for the introduction. Um, welcome to Let's Talk About Mental Health. I just like to tell everybody that I'm not a mental health expert, but I am an instructor for a course called Mental Health First Aid, which teaches people what to do when someone is experiencing a decline in their mental health or experiencing a crisis. So we talk about what to do before professional supports come. It's an eight hour training course. It's available in Canada, the US and India and also other countries, I'm sure. I do the training for school businesses and also to the general public. And I'll tell you more about that at the end of the presentation. So who are all of you? Um, my understanding is that most of you are undergoing some kind of a career change, either starting your career or looking for new directions and opportunities, all of which are very exciting, but can also come with challenges and stress that can affect your mental health. We have an international audience here, so I'm welcoming everybody. My goal today, let me turn on my... My goal today is to present the topic of mental health and self-care in a framework that may provide you with a new perspective on managing your mental health during times of change in your life. So what I'd like to talk to you today is what is mental health? What is mental illness? Um, introduce you to a mental health continuum, a type of a self-check-in tool and also talk about self-care practice. How can I manage, how can you manage your mental health, especially during times of change like job search, career change? Before we go on, I'd like to thank you all for being curious and coming today to find out more about mental health. It's a personal topic. It can be difficult to talk about, but it is so important. So again, thank you for being brave. And hopefully you will want to share the information that you've learned today with others. Just wanna start off by finding out, getting a snapshot of, of the audience today and ask, by asking you a question. When you think of mental health, what is a word that comes to your mind? a word or a phrase. If you wanna share it in, um, in the chat, that would be great. Just what is a word that comes to your mind? Mental health, it can be anything. Just share what you think. It's helpful for everybody to see what, um, you can put it in the chat and then we'll be able to see. Pivotal. Okay. Okay, we'll move on and we will look at the answers later. But one thing I do want to emphasize is that we all have mental health. Mental health is not the same as mental illness. 
It is closely related to physical health. We all have it. And it changes depending what's going on with our life. Here's a definition of mental health. We all have mental health, just like we have physical health. It affects how we think, feel, and act. Refers to our emotional and psychological and social well-being. Affects how we handle stress, relate to others, make choices. It's not static. It depends on what's going on with our lives and our abilities to cope. People used to think of mental health in two ways. Either you're mentally healthy or you're mentally ill. So we just had two categories. You fit into one or another. And can you imagine the stigma that people live with? if they've been categorized as being mentally unwell or ill. However, this isn't at all how people experience mental health. Mental health, just like physical health, fluctuates along a continuum. When you think of your mental, your physical health, sometimes we are ill. Either we have a broken leg or we get diabetes. We learn to manage the condition we feel better and we continue living our lives. It's the same with mental health. I'm gonna show you the four phases of the mental health continuum. This is the continuum here, okay? This is all mental health, okay? Sometimes we're healthy, sometimes we're not so healthy. Okay, but we're shifting along the continuum as we live our lives. Everyone has their own journey and everyone is different. Sometimes things go well and life is good and sometimes things are difficult and challenging. Depends on our personality, certain risk factors that we have in our lives, how we regulate, manage our emotions, our intrapersonal skills. So when we are, when we have positive mental health, we are here on the continuum in the green, kind of the healthy zone. Our mood is generally positive. We have good, effective coping skills. We can solve problems when things get difficult. Overall, our life is satisfying. On the continuing, sometimes things happen. Right? Sometimes situations come up where we may have some anxiety, less energy. For example, here, writing exams, big important exams sometimes. Sometimes we feel that there's something not quite right. There's kind of a low lying cloud above us. We can cope and things do become better again. But distress is part of life, whether it's divorce, overwhelming pressures, financial or family, and lack of coping skills. Distress manifests itself in different ways in different people. Sometimes it's intuitive, but for others it is more difficult. So sometimes we are struggling. Sometimes distress is bigger and more serious. Our emotions may be more intense. We have a lot less energy, trouble sleeping, difficulty with day-to-day -day life. We're working hard and trying hard at school, at work, in our relationship, but we're not getting the results that we think we should be getting. If mental health problems are not addressed, they can become mental health illnesses. People can and do develop a sense of helplessness and hopelessness where they don't know what to do. I'm going to talk more about mental illnesses in a moment, but I want to show you the rest of the continuum. So as you can see, this is the whole continuum. We were just looking at the top part where the different phases were identified, where we were mentally healthy, we were experiencing mild mental health challenges or reacting or injured where we were struggling, 
And then the last one is mental um, health illnesses. There are many versions of this continuum on the internet. If you go to Google and you type in mental health continuum, many different versions will come up. They're mostly the same. Um, you can choose one that you like. You can see that each phase in the continuum is described with signs and symptoms. For example, mood changes, thinking and attitude changes, for example, negative thinking, being more distracted, unable to focus, um, changes in behavior, we're sleeping a lot, we're isolating, um, addictive behavior, we're using substance use or gaming to cope, and physical changes as well, weight loss or gain. Okay. So what you do, this is a checklist as you can see. So you would just read through the different phases and if something applies to you, you would check it off. And you can track your changes this way and assess where you are on the continuum. If you look at the link here on the, on the right, um, you can click that on and it's a really good version of the continuum because it's interactive and you can click on the different signs and symptoms that you may be experiencing and the colors will light up and you can see where you are on the continuum. So I do wanna talk about mental health illness for a moment. Mental health illness is the most severe part of the continuum. Mental health illnesses are diagnosed medical conditions. When you have a mental health illness, it disrupts your daily life. It's difficult or sometimes impossible to work, go to school, uh, be with your family and friends because your thinking, emotions, and behavior are affected. Important to know that it's not a person's fault if they become mentally ill. It's an illness like heart disease or diabetes. The most common mental illnesses are depression and anxiety. Important to know, people recover from mental health and substance use problems and mental illnesses. Support and treatment are available. Reach out to ask for help. If you find that a lot of your check marks are landing in the red section of the continuum, really important to tell someone that you trust or reach out to a healthcare or mental health professional in your area. Also, before we go on, just want to let you know that this are some statistics around mental health. 50% of all people will develop a mental health or substance use problem in their lifetime. Okay, so that's 15, five, zero. Um, but there is help available. Tell someone you trust, reach out for supports. So I'd like you to take a moment, I don't know if we have time to do this, but once you find the mental health continuum online, um, consider where you may be on the continuum right now. Okay. Mental health changes throughout our life. We have some control over it by building self-awareness, a self-care practice and seeking supports and when needed, turning to professional help. Each continuum also comes with um, a set of actions that you can take um, depending on where you are. So for example, you can talking to someone, taking a break sometimes can be very helpful, asking for help with schoolwork or your family life, Managing and reducing your stress if possible.
And I really like this infographic, different types of self-care. What do you do in your life that re-energizes you, gives you a sense of joy, inner satisfaction, sense of peace and stability to handle life's many ups and downs? These are self-care techniques, all organized according to you know, physical, emotional, social, spiritual, personal. And it's very individual what each person um, needs to re-energize themselves. Okay, sometimes a walk in the forest is useful. Sometimes doing some kind of arts and crafts. Sometimes sports can give you that sense of um, energy, satisfaction, and, and confidence too. If you incorporate the types of self-care that work for you into your life, you will find that you will naturally shift to the green and feel better. So how can all this continuum, how, how can all this, well, I can't read it, information about the mental health continuum benefit me? So this can be exciting time in your lives. Job search, job change, career shift, pivots. Um, and they can certainly lead to improved mental uh, well-being. However, the process may be complex. And the stakes are high, so the pressure is greater. I don't know about you, but nothing that I really plan and do works out uh, like the first image. Life has its ups and downs. And I think for you, the pandemic has changed the labor market, competitive job market, periods of unemployment, dealing with rejection, unsuccessful interviews. All of this can affect your mental health. So you can use the continuum to check in with yourself. Use the checklist. How am I doing? Am I struggling? Do I need to learn new coping skills? Do I need to connect to my support network, friends? Can I make any changes to minimize some of the stressful things that I'm going through? Am I doing too much? Am I neglecting my healthy habits? Okay, remember, eating, sleeping, exercising, all important for maintaining physical and mental health. What am I doing for self-care? Is it enough? Do I need to ask for help? Do I need to reach out? So to end with, you may be interested in finding out more about mental health and mental illness. And more importantly, you would like to learn how to start a conversation with someone who is experiencing a decline in their mental health or experience a crisis. So how do you start that conversation with someone about mental health and encourage them to seek help? Taking the mental health first aid training is a great way to learn how to do that. It's an, at the end of the training, it's usually eight hours, you get an internationally recognized certificate and you will be better equipped to talk about mental health with your friends, family, and your social groups, your workplaces. Talking about mental health is the best tool we have against stigma and the shame of living with mental illness. And hopefully I have given you a new different perspective about thinking about mental health. Mental Health First Aid, the training, exists in Canada, and I am one of the instructors. If you wish to get in touch with me, that's my email address. Um, also, Mental Health First Aid exists in the U.S. It's called Mental Health First Aid U.S. If you Google it, you will get all the information. And it also exists in India, Mental Health First Aid India. So you, again, the organization exists in your country, contact them and you can get more information. And if you're in Canada, please reach out to me. And that's, that's it for me, Meg. <laughs>
thank you so much, Christina. That was absolutely wonderful. I really, I, I especially loved um, how you kind of kept highlighting the idea of reaching out for help and pursuing those self-care things. I feel like I, personally, I had a huge mental health crisis last year, um, like early last year that resulted in a diagnosis of bipolar disorder, which oh, wow. was at 35. That's huge. That's, wow. that's, that's like, let's reframe kind of everything and see like, Oh yeah, I didn't, I maybe didn't have those problems because I'm lazy. Maybe I was having these problems because I had an undiagnosed mental health disorder that I was trying to deal with very unsuccessfully. Cause how do you fight a bear when you don't know that you're fighting a bear? So I, I very much identify with what you're talking about. And I love the idea of continuing to ask for help because personally for me, that's a really hard thing. And I think that's true of a lot of people. Um, and one of the things that really helped me was hearing both from my therapist as well as from my friends and stuff um, that, you know, reaching out for help and then realizing like, hey, maybe I'm actually doing okay is not a problem. If you reach out for help and that person maybe can't help you the way that you want, or you reach out for help and it turns out maybe it's, it's uh, you know, it's great to always get that extra assistance, but maybe you don't really need it. No one's going to be mad at you. No one's upset of like, why did I help you? So yeah. I think that's. <laughs> That's one of those things that is important to drive home for people. Um, before we wrap up today, just as a selfish question, is there something that you like to talk about with mental health that no one really like thinks to ask? Like the big question that you wish people would talk about that isn't really like in, in either in the zeitgeist or it's not necessarily a buzzword right now. I know like gaslighting was super popular last year. It was like not popular, but you know, like kind of a newer term for a large group of people um, to, to kind of get used to or, or come to understanding with. Um, do you think there's something that's, that's like that now yeah. that, that you're really trying to focus on? Yeah, I can, I think self-stigma is a big thing right now oh, it's good. when yeah it's when people internalize the negative labeling the stereotypes about mental health and apply them to themselves so the signs and symptoms of many mental health illnesses are similar sorry i lost my train of thought oh my god the I'm signs so and symptoms of mental health um <laughs> being very similar to other, like, you know, kind of like other things going on. Other, other negative things. And people think maybe I'm lazy. Maybe I'm incompetent. Maybe I can't do my job, but really, as you had stated, um, there's something more going on. There are mental health problems, illnesses, perhaps, and you can recover. And you're a perfect example of that. Um, and life can go on with treatment, with a diagnosis and treatment, self-care and the support of family and friends. Critical. Yeah. I don't know if I go with perfect example, because I feel like we're all like <laughs> some oh. variety of like hot mess in progress. But, yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we're all on the continuum, right? We're all mm -hmm. shifting back and forth. Sometimes things are better and something, sometimes things are more difficult. It's life. Yeah. Absolutely. I just want to say thank you so much um, for joining us today to talk about this. I feel like the, you're right. The, the stakes uh, feel very high when you're job, job searching, but they feel even higher when either you're new to job searching in general, or you are new to the industry or to the role in which you're job searching because you're trying to make a pivot. Um, and you're right that that whole idea of like the false self narrative, it is, it's not only tempting it's very insidious. It's difficult to see because you think you're being logical and you think you're like assessing where your strengths and weaknesses really lie. But that imposter syndrome that again was a huge buzzword in the last couple months. Yeah. Yes. It feeds into that. It absolutely does. And so, you know, yeah, re-examining your situation and your actions closely, it's never a bad thing to kind of just review a little bit, but yeah, taking all of that onto yourself without truly investigating or getting all of the input or help that that hopefully is there for people yeah yeah it's it's a very slippery slope of, of starting thinking one thing and and just kind of following that instead of branching out and saying okay what else might be going on here i love that yeah. um all right one last question before we let you go i would love to know if you have um a self-care thing that you love mm -hmm. i i found a couple things for me that aren't 
they don't, it's not like you're kind of your first thought of self-care, but I would love to hear um, what, what are some of the things that you like to do for self-care? I have a big thing in my life. I'm an artist. And for me, um, working with my hands, whether I'm making um, paper mache bowls and painting them or covering them with colorful paper, I just love doing that. And it's a complete escape for me. And um, it brings me a lot of joy and re-energizes me for the rest of my life. So I can do well at work, function for others. And always, I always have that thing at the back of my mind. I can always go back to my art and, um, and, and get what I need out of it, which is just enjoyment, energy, creativity, um, and it colors my life. So for me, I'm very fortunate. I found that and it really works well for me. I love that. I absolutely love it. I do similar kinds of things. I love a good project. I love trying out a new, um, a new, either like, you know, creative technique or something that I've never tried before. Yeah. And it's one of those things that really helps me to get away from the idea that everything has to be productive because productive is like that seductive sort of thing that we're all like pitched at least a lot in the American consciousness. Um, that yeah, I think absolutely. Really important. Um, yeah. It's important to kind of try and divest your self-care from the idea of like, this has to be productive or this has to work. Um, yeah, I love that. Well, it's thank you so much. Um, we're so excited to have had you today. Thank you. Thank you so much oh, for spending time with us. Um, and absolutely, um, everybody, if you're, if, as you're listening to this, um, please feel free to, you know, like, like, uh, Christina said, you know, reach out, um, make those connections, find help for yourself, or even just tell others that you need help. You'll be kind of surprised at the amount of resources and help that is accessible to you. If you just open up and tell people, this is what you need. Um, and sometimes those resources come in the least expected places. So, please, please, please reach out um, if you think you need help um, or if you, if you think other people need help, it's always helpful to, to kind of be looking out for one another.